In this video, I'm going to break down five STEM myths and show you what you can expect from watching STEM with Mr N. So, myth number one, STEM education only takes place in the classroom. STEM education can actually take place anywhere. One of the main things I look to do with my channel is make sure that you are able to perform the experiments at home. Sometimes you can do these on your own and sometimes you will need an adult to help you. But for the most part, the materials that you need to perform these experiments are easy to get in any supermarket or from Amazon. And I encourage everybody to have a go at the experiments I am trying. Myth number two, STEM is only for certain types of people. For a long time, it was thought that STEM subjects and STEM careers were only for men, and in the West, this was particularly white men. This is something that has been changing over the years, and there has been some progress, although it has been slow in some areas of STEM. On my YouTube channel, every month I release an interview with a different person working in a different STEM career. Some of my interviewees have included a Haitian American who runs an educational drones company, a Sri Lankan engineer, as well as multiple women working in diverse fields such as engineering and forensic anthropology. The aim of these interviews is to show you that STEM is for everyone. It doesn't matter your race, ethnicity or gender. STEM is for all. Myth 3. STEM is only about teaching science, technology, engineering and maths. This is not the case. When you are doing STEM, you are actually developing a whole range of other skills, such as critical thinking skills, problem solving and creativity. You even have to communicate your ideas and learn the scientific process. The idea of STEM is to be able to then engage in real world STEM problems. So on my YouTube channel, with the experiments, I try and link these where possible to different STEM careers that might use the skills and the knowledge that you are developing through these experiments. I also encourage people not just to try the experiments I'm doing, but to try different ways of doing the experiments or testing different materials. This is all about working up that scientific process, the problem solving skills and the creativity. Myth number four, STEM comes at the expense of other subjects in the curriculum. Again, this is just not the case. As I mentioned in myth number three, with STEM you need to work on your communication skills. I have worked with people and have interviewed people who have developed their language skills through STEM because they had to communicate their thoughts and ideas and processes with other people and this helped them develop their language skills. You should also be recording the results of your experiments and your observations and maths links in quite a lot with different sciences, technology and engineering which is why it's a vital part of that STEM acronym. Myth 5. STEM is only for older pupils. It has actually been shown that early and ongoing engagement in STEM leads to ongoing academic success, as well as pupils being equipped with skills that allow them to better cope with a technology-focused modern workplace. So what can you expect from watching STEM with Mr N? Well, I produce fortnightly videos. Sometimes these are science experiments and explanations. Sometimes these are STEM career interviews, giving you an insight into different careers and how these people got involved in STEM. And sometimes it's looking at robotics and coding. Notable interviewees include a paleontologist advising on the upcoming Jurassic World film, a world leading forensic anthropologist, an internationally known theoretical physicist and best-selling author, and a former engineer for Ford who's advised on multiple BBC programmes. I could sit here and speak to you about all of the different things I've done, but it's much easier just to show you. So let's check it out.